Back in this day when this channel sported a different name and my understanding of YouTube was still taking shape, although I can't claim to be an expert even now, I ventured into the realm of game reviews with a brief analysis of Phantom Crash. To be honest, my first encounter with the game was more of a speed run rather than a deep exploration. I skimmed through the story and overall experience, focusing primarily on gameplay, and truth be told, I wasn't entirely blown away. Now, despite the chorus of voices proclaiming that Phantom Crash is a hidden gem, I still feel a little underwhelmed about the experience. I don't intend to suddenly reverse everything I previously stated about the game, as it still has its fair share of issues, it would be disingenuous of me to suggest otherwise. However, the time has come for a proper re-evaluation, especially now that I've immersed myself in a plethora of mech-based games, basically being a little more versed on the giant robot genre as a whole. Before I proceed, let me take a moment to express my genuine appreciation for all of you who've shared your personal connections and stories related to Phantom Crash. Your engagement has been invaluable, and I truly enjoy hearing your perspectives on the games even when I don't enjoy them personally. I do believe a community of gamers should be able to express their opinions on what they feel is good and bad, and I'm always up for hearing it. So without further ado, let's embark on a second, more in-depth journey through the world of Phantom Crash on the original Xbox. <laughs> Phantom Crash is a mech combat game developed by Genki and published by Phanagram exclusively for the Xbox in 2002. Much like most of the Xbox library, it went mostly forgotten until recently when it was reevaluated as a cult classic. The game is set in a sort of post-post-apocalyptic world, but I'll be getting more into that later. You take on the role of a wirehead who joins the latest robot fighting craze. The game's standout feature is its unique visual style that combines elements of anime and cyberpunk. Characters are all designed very well, but they have really exaggerated features and bright colors, something like Jet Set Radio Future or a Suda51 game. Meanwhile, environments tend to be dark and gritty and suit the sort of post-apocalyptic thing I was talking about earlier. The game's soundtrack is also a standout featuring a mix of electronic and rock music that perfectly captures the game's atmosphere, but also the time period in which it was released. Phantom Crash was met with positive reviews from critics who praised its unique visual style and fast-paced gameplay, and eventually having a soft sequel called Steel Lancer Arena International on the PlayStation 2. And if you really want to know how starved the mech community is when it comes to games, look no further than these two. As despite the interesting in-game world, Phantom Crash is phenomenally bare bones. As I said, the most interesting part of Phantom Crash is its world. You won't be exploring a whole lot of it or learning much about the events that destroyed a large section of Tokyo, but you'll be thoroughly introduced to its new sport, rumbling. Of course, with this new extreme sport, with an X of course, a series of new terms emerged, such as Scooby, which is the chosen slang for mechs in the year 20XX, I suppose. <laughs> Of course, you're a wirehead as well, which is what they call the pilot of one of these Scoobies and a contestant who likes to rumble. And of course, defeating rival Scoobies makes you a crasher because you crash that Scooby. Titles sort of coming together, right? Kind of, like, intelligent, I guess? No, I'm not. The game boasts a massive cast of characters, each with their own unique side stories to tell. Whether it's a shop owner or a randomly encountered Scooby pilot, you'll eventually encounter them outside of combat, and you'll learn about their hopes, desires, dreams, and motivations. The interconnectedness of everyone in Phantom Crash's fictional community creates a really intriguing picture of what exactly the Rumbling League is all about. These people all have a major investment in what's going on, except for maybe you, because you're a silent dog all like character. Since every AI in the game is sentient, they actively participate in conversations within the story as well. The writers have gone all out in creating distinctive AI characters, each with their own quirks and unique traits. I can't help but be fascinated by the people-pleasing turtle or the overly nihilistic dog that serves as the game's enigmatic antagonist. However, it's a shame that nothing was done with your own AI, which only offers a few lines during combat, and the quality of those lines can be varied depending on the quality of the chip itself. So if you happen to have a dog one, then don't expect much. Your first steps in Phantom Crash involve purchasing a Scooby. You'll have enough money to choose one from three manufacturers, each with its own distinctive appearance. 
However, customization options in Phantom Crash are, let's say, just a bit limited. The scuba you initially select is likely going to be the one you use throughout the game, so it's crucial to review the specs before making a decision. This is going to greatly affect gameplay. There are only a handful of weapons available for the three scuba models that you can purchase. You're able to swap out AIs, upgrade them, purchase additional optional parts, and make minor tweaks to items. Paint jobs for personalization are also available, but overall, the customization pales in comparison to even the original Armor Core on PlayStation. Additionally, the game lacks variety in its arenas. There are only four, each with day and night variations. All of them consist of ruined areas from the destroyed Old Tokyo District. The only notable variation is an arena set in underground corridors and, you guessed it, sewers. Phantom Crash's gameplay is about as basic as its customization. The main goal is to gain enough experience to combat the enigmatic first ranker. So this means grinding out the same four arenas with night and day modes over and over and over again for hours on end. Now to give the game credit, there is a major twist in the structure of arena matches that is pretty much unique to Phantom Crash. Instead of one-on-one -on -one fights, you're placed in battle royale styled skirmishes with multiple Scoobies. Taking down as many opponents as possible is necessary to lure out the ranker for that arena's time period and class. And this is basically how you progress in the game. There are a few configuration specific matches or paid entry matches, but they all operate in the same manner. While it's not a bad system, it can be chaotic and confusing for newcomers, especially without delving into the game's many tutorials. Controlling your Scooby in Phantom Crash can be a bit cumbersome to say the least. While it works fine for simple maneuvers, it becomes stiff and awkward when attempting more complicated actions, especially dodging. Each action is tied to a different button on the controller, which is typical for mech shooters. However, this control scheme can be extremely straining for players using the original Xbox controller. They often have to take their fingers off the face buttons to press the black and white nubs below or above. It feels like the modern gamepad is more suited for the job in this case. There are no weapons that handle in any unexpected or unique ways. In fact, there aren't really any unique weapons here at all. You're mostly just getting the same roundabout as machine guns, pistols, missiles, and cannons. That's literally it. Optic camouflage within the game is visually impressive and can be useful for escaping combat situations, allowing you to save your Scooby from damage. However, beyond its cool appearance and the ability to evade enemies, there isn't much depth to its functionality. Opponents can also camouflage themselves, which is fair in this sort of game, but it also leads to a lot of annoying moments where you're playing cat and mouse with an invisible Scooby. And that's all there is to say about Phantom Crash. This is the entire game. There is nothing else here. So if I say that maybe the cult classic status with this game isn't exactly warranted, you can see why. This game is about as shallow as a puddle. It looks nice, there's a cool story, but there's so many plot holes and missing elements and zero depth to the gameplay itself. By the time you clear D rank, you will have already seen everything this game offers and that's the first rank to clear. Objectively, I can't say this thing is good. I did have some fun with the gameplay here and there, but I really had to look at it for what it was and that's ultimately not much. Of course, I'd love to hear what you think about the game. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, however that's completely optional and I will see you in the next video.